First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. Holy Epistle. Verse 23. Now I'll read it to your hearing two verses. Amen. First Corinthians 10. 23. Everybody there? Yeah. New King James. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are healthy. Yeah. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. Yeah. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well being. Mm -hmm. the Lord had a blessing to hear you read this little precious word. I'm going to talk to you from this subject. Watch what you do. Mm. Yeah. Turn to his name to the neighbor. Neighbor. Pastor's going to preach about it. Pastor's going to preach about it. Watch what you do. Watch what you do. Watch what, 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 what. what you do. Paul was aware of the fact that the law did not deal specifically with every area of life in black right, and white. Right, right. There are some things in life you all that are somewhat gray. Mm -hmm. There are some things and some things that we have to look for principles in order to address them. So when Paul used the words in verse 23, he had reference to things not specifically named in the scriptures that are or as sinful. Right. So in this particular verse, he had a reference to the questionable practices. He had a reference to the gray areas of Christian living, you all, that are not specifically forbidden in the Bible. Paul was concerned about the fact that there are some things a Christian can do that may not be simple, but they may not be profitable, and they may not edify. Uh -huh. All right. Y'all want to pray for me today? Yeah. All right. All right. This word profitable means to contribute in order to help. Yeah. It means to be expedient, mm -hmm. right. beneficial, or advantageous. Mm -hmm. It speaks of something being done for the common good of all. all right. The word speaks of something being useful or helpful. Brothers and sisters, there are many things that we do that need to be questioned concerning their usefulness. All right. All right. Paul used another word to show his readers that there are some things that may be right, but they may not be valuable. Y'all want to stay with me? He said that about he said that all things do not edify. This word edify means to build a, a house or to erect a building. It means to straighten or to, to make more able. It speaks of promoting Christian growth. Right. It means there are some things you all that may that I may choose to do that are right, but they might but they might help but, but they might not help me in my Christian growth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Might be right, mm -hmm. but it might not help me in my mm -hmm. particular growth, yeah. Christian growth. This means you all that are, that there are some things that I may choose to do, Reverend Hegwood, that are right, but they just don't. Reveal a Christian-like character mm -hmm. yeah. of who I am. All right. Now, the best way to glorify God is to do is by doing things that are proper for us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Best way to glorify God is by doing things that are proper for us, God and others. Let me say mm -hmm. that. Proper to us, mm -hmm. God and others. Mm -hmm. Now, two questions I want you to ask yourself. Two questions to ask for your own testing. Number one, verse twenty-three. Is the thing or act expedient and edifying? Uh -huh. It's right there in the text, y'all. Don't fall asleep. I won't be long. Verse 23. It, it, it may be lawful. It may be legitimate and allowed. But is it expedient? Mm -hmm. We're going to learn some today. This is a teaching section. There ain't going to be a lot of hooping and hollering and all that. Unless Holy Spirit say, oh, why? Wow. Amen. Because we, we got to get up in there like this. But it, is, is it expedient? Is it beneficial? Is it helpful? Here it is. Is it useful? Mm -hmm. All right. Good question. Good question. But is it edifying? Is it building up? Is it constructing? Is it maturing us? That's test number one. See, we do a lot of things, you all. Just be doing some stuff for ourselves. But is it useful, beneficial? Let me more. Test number two. 
does the thing or act seek the welfare of others? Mm -hmm. okay. Pastor, where you getting that out? Verse 24. Mm -hmm. Let no one seek his own, but each one the other's well-being. Mm -hmm. That's where we have a problem at from church folk. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Yeah. The well-being of others. Amen. Yeah. They seek his own, but each one the well-being of others. Now, yeah. now we are not to we are not to act for self, but for others. Right. That's that's what we have. That's where we follow. But let no one seek his own good, but that of his neighbor. Yeah. Now let me give you this golden nugget, you all. Mm -hmm. Our fingertips don't fade from the lives we touch. All right. mm -hmm. Uh, that means it's so good. Yeah. Our fingertips don't, don't, don't fade for the lives we touch. Paul was suggesting that there are times when the principles and the practices of others have to be placed above our own. I, I, I didn't think I'd get too many amens. Listen, listen. When Christians are making decisions, we have to consider not only how that decision will affect us, we must also consider how it's going to affect others. Yeah. Yeah. Can I get three witnesses in the house? Yeah. Yeah. The word seek here, you all, this verse means to pursue in order to find. It, it, the, the seeking is done by thinking, meditating, or reasoning. It means to strive after. It also means to, to, to want or to crave. The verse in this word, uh, 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 a warning uh, to the Corinthians, is not to be selfish in their efforts. Lord, help me today. Amen. He was challenging the readers to give up something for the sake of others. Yeah, yeah. We got a problem like that yeah. in church. Go ahead, Amen. Right. Amen. For the sake of others. We always say, well, it ain't about me, it ain't about me, it ain't about, but when it comes down to it, when you look when you when you look at the whole situation, it is about you. Because yeah, right. oftentimes we feel we got to have the last word. Yeah, you know, man. Yeah. 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 And, and because you got to have the last word, that don't mean the word is right. <laughs> right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If it's hurting and it's expecting others, right. I ain't always right. Mm -hmm. No, no. But the thing is, we got to look at our own self in the mirror and say, wait a minute, I, I got to take myself out of the picture. You're right, man. Right, right. right. You know, it's hard to take yourself out of the picture. Because mm -hmm. you, you know what? You look so good. <laughs> you dress so nice. All right. <laughs> All right. He was challenging the readers to give up something for the sake of others. Now, this idea was also dealt with, with, dealt with by Paul when he wrote to the Christians at Philippi. All right. Mm -hmm. He just didn't pick up the church on Corinth mm -hmm. or at Corinth. Mm -hmm. You can go there now if you want. Second uh, Philippians chapter two, verse three and four. Mm -hmm. It's in your Bible. I like the rest. It's in your mm -hmm. Bible. Let y'all talk Philippians chapter two, verse three and four out. <laughs> he said to them, do nothing for selfishness or mm. empty conceit, but with humility of mind, let each of you, this in the Bible, regard one another as more important than himself. Mm. It's right there. And do not merely look out for your own personal interests, right. but also, Lord, y'all want me to keep on preaching? Keep on preaching, bro. For the interests of others. This means the motive for what we do supersedes the action. All right, all right. <laughs> Listen, I can't hold you along with this communion stuff. <laughs> God is as much concerned about why we do what we do as he is about what we do and how we do it. Do I have a praying church? Mm -hmm. He's concerned about your motives behind. It, That's right. Yeah. right. Amen. Of what you're doing. Right. Amen. When we right. let me let me help you. When you move into a new home right. as someone else has lived in, it, it's your house. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but the, although the former owners, Reverend Hegwood, they're, they're no longer there. Right. The old people were there and that were there. They might have been stained, they might have been dirty, they might have been despicable. They might have been filthy. They might have, it might have been unkept. Right. They might have been unclean. Now the house may have reflected who they were. Right, right. But now you purchased the home. Yeah. Right, right. And you are a clean person. Right. You're concerned about removing the dust. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. 
amen, sweeping the floor and cleaning the dishes and, and painting the walls. Mm -hmm. Now you move into that house and because you're there, the house you all takes on a different appearance. Right. Are y'all still with me? Yes. Yeah. Remember when they come down your road, the grass is cut, yeah. the dishes are clean, yeah. the carpet is vacuumed, the furniture is polished, the windows are sparkling. Why? Because a new person has moved into that old house. Right. Right. Let me help you along. Stay with me. Brothers and sisters, before you met Christ, mm -hmm. that old person was living in that house called your body. Mm -hmm. Oh, you see where I'm going now. But brother Ewan, but now that Jesus has moved in, mm -hmm. it's the same body, yeah. but you got a new resident yeah. living on the inside. Yeah. Now, watch the yeah. 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 Oh, bless his name. Yeah. This new resident you all is holy. Right. It's clean. Yeah. Pure and righteous. Yeah, yeah. Even though he's living in that old house, he can make it look good. Amen. Even though he's living in that old house, he can yeah. paint it up. Right, right. Even, he's, even though he's living in that old house, yo, he can clean it up. He can fix up the carpet, you all. Mm -hmm. He can hang the drapes. Straighten yeah. out the silverware. Everything that is wrong in your life, you all, you can be cleaned up right yeah. now. Because you got something new on the inside. Right? Yeah, right. Not because your bodily house has changed, but because somebody new has moved in. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I knew you all. I yes, am the same person. And because yeah. somebody else has moved in, amen, that new resident is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Watch what you do. Yeah. He's living in you. Right, right, right. And oftentimes, we yeah. as church folk are embarrassed Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit because of the things we out there doing. Yeah. Right, right, right. You represent Christ. You, right, you represent right. your pastor. You represent greater faith. Amen. Right. You represent the kingdom. Watch what you do. Right, right, and we just right. drag Jesus along everywhere. Yeah. And we say we love the Lord. And we use four letter words and five letter words. We say we love the Lord. We take our folks underneath the table. We say we love the Lord. We go from relationship to relationship. We say we love the Lord. We give all our money to the casino. But we say we love the Lord. Watch what you do. We say we love the Lord. We talk about the people in our own church, our own pastor, our own deacon, our own first lady, our own trustee. Watch what you do. You call yourself a Christian. Right. Sometimes you just ought to just rip off that rip off that outfit. Right. And say, I got hell in me today. He's a new creation. Yeah. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Yeah. You know that scripture, but does that scripture live in you? Have all yeah. things become new? Right. Or are you just trying to hold on to that other old stuff? All right. Yeah. John 16, 16, 13. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will, he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, Jordan, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. Listen to what my brother said yesterday, Sweet Lou and Amen and Pookie and them and May Man and them <laughs> and all this kind of kind of, they ain't got no heaven and hell to put you. Quit listening, everybody. And ladies, quit listening to your beautician. Brothers, quit listening to your barber all the time. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Amen. Quit listening to folk all up in the grocery store. You better dwell on the Lord's spirit, the Holy Spirit, and talk to him. Talk to him. Amen. Amen. Jesus said in John 14, 16, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another heaven that will abide in you forever. Amen. Said this weekend revival. God ain't concerned about your DD, right. your MA, your BS, your TDHD, and all this here, and some of these things, colleges you, he talks to you with the Yale, Harvard, KU, Stanford, Central Missouri, amen, and poor, he don't care about, are you saved? How, how's your soul today? Do you really love it? See, let me help you. Most people have warrants. I'm almost done. All right. I don't want to put y'all in the slump like the raw. Yeah. Yeah. Ross can't, Brother Black. Ross 
can't score a run. Last year, y'all hollering at this time. Me too. But things changed. Right. It was storming the other night. Right. Things changed. Right. Sun is shining today. Right. People change. Yeah. Right. You change. Yeah. Your bosses change. Yeah. Cars change. I done had a whole lot of those automobiles. Might get another. Yeah. Things change. Y'all change clothes. Yeah. I change neck, change shoes. Yeah. I feel this thing. Yeah. People change church, but you know what? God don't change. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Most people have warranties on their major products. They own in their homes. Right. Let me close this thing down. A warranty simply guarantees that the manufacturer will stand behind their product. Right. It's a guarantee, you all, that there's a defect. And if there's a defect, mm -hmm. if there's a fault, Brother Morgan, mm -hmm. if there's a failure, mm -hmm. that the manufacturer will stand behind the product. Mm -hmm. Hold on. But all warranties have limitations. All right, Sister Clavel, the warranty is not designed to cover abuse by the owner. Go ahead, ah. yeah. You just can't take that toaster and throw it up against the wall. You just can't jump on that toaster or take it in the driveway and run over. Then the claim and the product warranty, you all, is no longer right, right. guaranteed. Warranties are offered under the assumption yeah. Lord help me, Go ahead, Ray. that the product yeah. will be used for its right. intended purpose. Right. Right. I gotta walk this out. I gotta walk this out. God's got a warranty on you. Oh, you see where I'm going. He's got a warranty in your life. As long, Sister Hegwood, as you use it for his purposes. Lord, help me today. And you existed for his glory. glory. He's going to back it up. Yeah, uh -huh. y'all yeah, really going to want to shout today. Right. I told you this was a teaching thing. Right. See, you got to, as long as you utilize it for God's glory, you all, he's going to back it up. But, I'm going now. Yeah. If you're out here acting like a fool. If you're acting like a sinner. God has no responsibility to back you up. If you're out down here raising all kind of hell, Sister Brown, God, he ain't got no provision. He ain't got no responsibility to back you up. If you're out here not walking by faith, but you're walking by sight, God, Ain't got no responsibility right. of backing you up. Yeah. If you're running around, running around, running around not forgiving folk, yeah. God yeah. ain't got no responsibility yeah. of backing you up. Yeah. If you're running around being a meddler, being a meddler and thinking about yourself yeah. and thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to think, but you all had a bag of chips. Well, God ain't got no responsibility to back you up. Because he tells you in Ephesians 5.18, he says, do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation. Right. Right. Everybody say dissipation. 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 With the spirit. She saw us are filled with so much stuff. Yeah. That, can I really have your spirit? Can't go in. Yeah. You ever been real full? You're talking about real food. Yeah. And can't nothing else get in. That's why the spirit can't come in you because you're too full of mess. Yeah. Too full of junk. Too full of hell. Too full of frustration. Too full of unforgiveness. And the spirit cannot live on the inside. And then the Bible says, Sex your affection on things above. All wrong. And not things on this earth. Right, right. Because God don't have to back no. his warranty yeah. if you're not edifying mm -hmm. and building him up. Yeah. And I close this down now. But seek ye first. Mm -hmm. 
the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. I told you I wasn't going to try to holler today. I'm done. Watch what you do. You do. Amen, Amen. 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 To see other folk do well. Amen. But we get so locked in in our own personal. Yeah. We can't see past that's it. the nose that's on the front of our face. Tell it, It's prayer time, church. Let us stand. Everlasting yeah. and forgiving, always hoping and enduring. Won't you come? Won't you come at all? Never failing. Thank you.